A little while ago, I made a video uh, talking about the Thatcher illusion, uh, which is essentially uh, an illusion where changing certain features on somebody's face uh, become harder to notice when the picture is upside down. Now, also uh, a while back, quite a while back, I did a video on a uh, on kind of like a hearing uh, illusion, where I was able to play uh, a song backwards, and you could hear satanic lyrics that none of them are actually there. Uh, there's also a lot of great illusions uh, involving the sense of touch, with like phantom limbs, and and making you feel like your body parts are someplace different from where they actually are, and even full out-of-body ex uh, experiences. Uh, but for this video, I want to focus primarily on uh, visual illusions, uh, particularly those involving color. Now, the first thing to remember is that color is essentially an invention of the mind, of the brain. And the colors you see are made by your brain in response uh, to various stimuli and perceptions, um, including, and very importantly, context. In other words, what kind of colors and shades are around something helps determine what color you see. For example, uh, take a look at this. Uh, picture here. Now, if you've seen this before, then you already know what I'm going to say, and that's that the square labeled A and the square labeled B are, in fact, the same color. Or, should I say, they're the same color as in it's the exact same shade and tone um, if you were to measure what's there, although the brain obviously sees it as two different colors. And if you find this hard to believe, then we can put a little connecting strip between them, which makes it more obvious that uh, they are, in fact, the same color. And if it's still hard to see, let me recommend that you put your hands up to cover up just about everything in the image except for the two squares in question. And uh, so if you got your hands up, I'm going to bring the image back, and then you can see more clearly that, in fact, they are the same color, and as I remove the stripe, all of a sudden, the illusion comes back, and they're different colors again. Here's an even better example of that effect using uh, full colors rather than just shades of gray. Uh, now, you see a spiral here, and you probably see uh, blue bands and green bands going around the spiral. Now, would you believe me if I told you that those two are, in fact, the same color. Or, should I say, uh, that if you were to take this image and load it into your favorite, you know, uh, image manipulation software, I happen to use GIMP, but you can use uh, Photoshop or, uh, or even, uh, I think, even uh, Paint uh, works for this. I'll, I'll have a link to the original image in the description. You'll see that, in fact, they are both the same color. They're both kind of a bluish turquoise. Uh, but to see how this happens, again, it's a matter of context. It's what colors are next to it. Here's a close-up. Now, if you look close, you can see that in between the, glue, the blue and green bands uh, is a band uh, made of uh, alternating orange and purple stripes. Now, of course, the interesting thing is that it's the purple stripes that go through the blue bands and the orange stripes that go through the green bands. So, now what happens if we cover up the orange and purple stripes? Presto! Now you can clearly see that they're the same color. And now if you look closely at the ends of the, uh, at the blue uh, stripes, you'll see uh, where they're touching either the uh, orange or the purple. You can see right there very closely that there is uh, that effect still going on. Pretty neat stuff. Now, it's very tempting to think about these illusions as having somehow fooled you. And in a sense, that's true. But 
I prefer to see the illusion as kind of a window into how we perceive the world. Um, the way we, we see things, the way we sense things, uh, is revealed in the illusion when it doesn't correspond exactly the way with the outside world that we expect it to. But, in fact, all of our color vision is in fact an illusion in a sense because the colors are all created by the brain. Uh, a great example of this would be mixing of colors. But when you mix several colors, you see, you know, two or three, whatever, you see them as a single color resulting from the mixture. But if we saw things, say, the way a spectrometer sees it, then we wouldn't see one color from mixing colors. We would see all the different colors. But what happens is the way we detect light with the cones in our eyes is that when you mix colors, they stimulate the cones in much the way that a different single color does, and so that's why we see it as a single color. And of course, the greatest color illusion of all is the color white, which is when enough different colors stimulate all three cones almost to the maximum, and we see everything as white. Now here's the interesting thing. If you were to look at a map of the retina, you would see that the color detecting cones are all concentrated in a little small part of the retina, right in the middle of the retina called the fovea. And basically the entire rest of the retina is dedicated to rods, which have no color sensitivity because they're, they're just about equally sensible, sensitive to light uh, for the entire visual spectrum. Now, what that means is that our peripheral vision has no sensitivity to color. And yet, when I hold my hands out here, I can see the color in the hands. Why is that? And the reason is because the brain fills it in. In other words, when you look at something, you oftentimes don't notice, but your eyes are darting around back and forth, up and down, and a lot of what's going on there is the, you know, the fovea there where all the cones are is picking up color information and then storing it in the brain so when you get black and white information around the rest of the retina, the brain fills in all the colors because of what it knew from when your eyes were darting all around. Now, to demonstrate this, I'm going to go with another illusion, which is uh, a related but not exactly the same effect. Now this is a picture I found on the internet. It's called Colorful Beetle. Now as you can see, I've removed the color. I converted it to grayscale using GIMP. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this picture and bring back the same exact picture in grayscale, but you're going to see it in full color. Now what you need to do now is to concentrate on the dot in the middle of the picture. And as you can tell, this is the same colorful beetle image from before, except this time instead of grayscaling it, I did inverse colors. Uh, keep your eye on the dot, very important. So what's happening here is essentially your retinas and your, and your brain are gathering in this information. So when I bring back the original grayscale image of the beetle, bang! you're going to see it in full color. Now, if you didn't believe that that was actually the grayscale image, uh, you can rewind the video, pause it right there, where it looked like it was in full color, and then maybe like look away for a little bit, then look back, and you'll see that that was, in fact, the, uh, the grayscale image. Which brings me back to the point I was making earlier. You really shouldn't think of the illusion as something that's fooling you, uh, something that you're, you know, that you want to try to beat, but try to view the illusion as a window into how your mind works. In other words, embrace the illusion.